So let's take a quick look at some core concepts around how to implement Amplitude. Um, Amplitude's documentation is actually uh, quite good uh, when it comes to documentation. Uh, so, so I'll just quickly go through some of the some ideas. They, this idea is to be very similar across most analytics tools, um, things like segment or mixed banding and that. They, you'll see the same concepts over and over again. Uh, so let's actually, you know, uh, let's start with some basic idea here. Uh, you can you, you should track data client side or server side. So client side would be something like a JavaScript library, uh, iOS libraries, Android libraries, or server side. Um, Amplitude has client side libraries, JavaScript, iOS, and Android. And then for the server, they just give you an HTTP endpoint to track. In terms of actual recommendations, typically what what we what we recommend and what we tend to see works really well is the, the bulk of the tracking can be done server side, so maybe about 80%, and about 20% tracking can be done client side, right? Uh, the client side uh, tracking is usually things around user tracking, uh, especially when the user goes from a sign up to a login, or maybe when they uh, when you're trying to say user properties and so on, versus the server side can be for pretty much anything else. Uh, most of the events are typically available uh, server side. Uh, this split becomes even more critical if you have a cross-platform product, and then you're let's say you're you're tracking the same event that's available on iOS, Android, and a web app. Instead of doing it three times on each client, you can do it once on the server side, and then just simply collect a property like a platform property uh, to specify where the event is coming from. So that gives you a lot of flexibility. Uh, it, it tends to be a little bit more durable when it comes to maintenance too. Uh, so uh, next thing in, in Amplitude, you'll have events, event properties, and then user properties. Uh, and you tend to, a third concept which would be group types or group properties, uh, which is on the account lookup, right? Uh, so let's quickly look here. Let's actually jump into the JavaScript library as a simplified way to look at some of those concepts. Uh, once you, some of the, the, the core ideas, you know, you have the track calls to track an event, track user properties, and again, depending on the library you're using or the SDK, it will be a slightly different format, but the same idea, you need an event, and the event can have event properties. Uh, Client-side libraries can also collect information for you, so things like browser, uh, the IP address can be converted into like region and city and so on. So there's a lot of properties that you don't have to track yourself, they'll do it for you. On the server side, you typically have to provide certain things to, to still meet those requirements, that is, um, if you want to get you know, the region and country and so on, you'll need to pass on an IP address and it'll get converted for you. The other thing to, to think about is about user IDs, right? Uh, so uh, in your product, as in your marketing website, people come and they'll be anonymous to you. But the moment they sign up or the moment they log in, once you know who they are, you set some kind of user ID. Uh, the best user IDs are things that don't change very much. So think like database IDs uh, and they'll be quite permanent over time and then you're gonna reuse that over and over again, right? And we'll set that either on the client side, let's say like, a, uh, so it gets stored in the cookie or on, or on server side libraries, right? We have event properties, we have user properties at the same level, right? So apart from those default user properties that get collected automatically, like region and country and browser and all that stuff, you can also send custom user properties, maybe like a plan that you should subscribe to or maybe it's going to A-B test the user uh, saw. So uh, those, those ideas will be there. I also mentioned in the revenue report that there are specific things to stuff around revenue, and that is there, there is um, uh, specific events around revenue that Amplitude is expecting to be able to create all the revenue stuff that you saw it. So this would be a handy section to review and double check for any of your revenue events to ensure that they meet uh, those requirements. Uh, let's see, some of those are more advanced. So that's, that's JavaScript. Um, so you know, short, what you want to think about is your track calls for events, event properties, uh, your calls around user identification, uh, like a user identify call, which is where you used to set a user ID, user properties. Uh, Amplitude also support groups, which is where you're going to use to set accounts or companies, you know, be able to uh, group users into some kind of account. Um, revenue specific things are also very handy to double check. We also talked a little bit about sessions, right? If you remember, sessions is something that Ampeta supports. Most of the client-side libraries support it out of the box. They'll, they'll give you some pre-configured settings uh, to change maybe how things get tracked, but you, you'll get that. Uh, if you're on the server side, you're gonna have to do a little bit more work to be able to do, still maintain those that session tracking. Uh, let's see something else here. You can backfield data. That is, if you have data stored in your, in your uh, product database, you can send it. 
uh, and then amplitude with the backfield that data for you, so you don't start from scratch. Uh, typically very handy. Uh, depends on the company and how much data they have actually captured, this will have uh, some availability or not, but something to, to double check uh, if you have it. And some of the uh, other APIs which you might want to uh, check out. We're not going to go through that uh, as much. Uh, just covering the general ideas here. Uh, there's also going to be another video there on tracking plans. Uh, tracking plans is typically the pre-work you do to any kind of implementation to ensure that the implementation is up properly. So watch that video on, on that concept. But once you have a tracking plan, once you're ready to implement, you know what events you want to track, what properties you want. Uh, you want to start to make some choices here on SDKs and become familiar with those specific SDKs uh, and their rules and things to keep in mind around that. As a whole, uh, I tend to find that the, the actual data implementation of sending the data is relatively pretty straightforward. Uh, it's usually trickier to get a good plan in place that has all the data that you need and that's organized in the right way, which is all about tracking plan. Uh, but once you have that, the sending of the data, how you send it, uh, it's, uh, you'll find it's really quite simple. Uh, once you start di di uh, digging it into the different SDKs, uh, there's not you know, that many options. Uh, you'll have very limited ways of doing things, and a lot of things will be done for you, and you have a lot of different things that will save you time. Uh, so check those out, and that can be your, your starting point.